Who cares? Just get back to the the badass fucking bear, as Tyson has written here. <laughs> yeah, yeah honestly, I wish we got to see that bear, bear more because that bear was fucking cool. He should have been the main character. Um, I'd watch a spinoff, spinoff just about, about the bear, the bear. <laughs> just wandering around eating people. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool, screaming at them in their friends' voices. That'd be the only dialogue. Somebody tried to make that noise, but what was the noise? Do it. Which noise? The bear noise. No. Oh. <laughs> 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 just, just screams like it. Okay, welcome to episode two of Movies Suck and So Does Your Face. This week we're reviewing Annihilation, which is basically a bunch of women stomping around in the woods. And Natalie Portman's in it. But okay, so a meteor, little synopsis, meteor has crashed down to Earth. And there's this weird shimmer thing. And Natalie Portman is sent in to investigate with some women. And some pretty weird stuff happens. But basically, they're just trying to figure out, like, what the fuck is going on. So, what did you guys think of Annihilation? I never figured out what the fuck was going on. I really liked it. Like, but it was my movie I recommended. <coughs> so. I liked uh, parts of this movie, but, like, to be honest, the first half, I was kind of bored mm-hmm. when the mutant bear showed up. Oh, spoilers, there's a mutant bear <laughs> in this thing. There's, there's like, a, a few scenes I liked, and I liked the ending. Uh, but... Like, the first half was a bit boring for me, so why don't we get into it, Tyson, you and your notes? Well, we could talk about what's boring first. Okay. There's just so much stomping around in the forest, and nothing was happening. I don't know, I really liked those scenes. I loved the, just the visuals of it. I like, mean, I liked the visuals, how everything's but it overgrown just felt like and the story was just so slow. Yeah, just but nothing was happening except cool visuals. That didn't bug me too much. I guess I was just enjoying like the atmosphere. I thought was really good, and just the attention to detail. Like whenever you see light reflecting off something, it's all rainbowy because of the bubble around the area they're in. Like, I mean, then it's just like a compilation of dope B roll and no story. I don't know. I I really enjoyed all that though, like a lot. Yeah, I actually I remember you guys were commenting on how much you liked the. Uh, like the the forest they were in and how good it looked. I actually thought it looked like shit. <laughs> I think part of that is because of the weird shimmer effect. So it just kind of made it look like they were in a like a video game or something. Yeah, some but of I, it looked weird. But I wasn't. I guess I wasn't taking into account the shimmer. But to me, it just looked bad. And um, oh, that, that alligator I thought looked kind of crappy too. No, there was some parts where yeah. the alligator was really. And that deer. The deer. The deer looked really like bad. Freaking white Bambi or something. Oh, it just looked like something that someone CG'd like 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> but the bear looked good. So, I mean, there's that. That's where all of their CG budget went was just the bear. It must have been. And that was like. I mean, they just hired some students to make the deer or something. <laughs> right. So why don't we start at some stuff that happened at the beginning? Is that how your notes are? Kind of progressing. Yeah. We could say that the beginning is pretty slow. Like, um, it doesn't really start to pick up until uh, they get actually get into Alec the area. Crocodile, pretty much. <laughs> well, because I, I, like I enjoy it in the, in the part where they all enter, and then they just wake up. Like, they just wake up in their tents, and they have no idea. They've just completely lost their memory of the last like five days. Yeah, that Which was doesn't really make any sense. Yeah, now that I say it out loud, never because, explained any of that. Because after they explain exactly what's going on, like what's causing that, like why would they just lose their memories all of a sudden? Well, I was confused because it seemed like they're on this mission, they're like doing stuff, and then I must have like been focusing on my really bad Vietnamese food because all of a sudden they're just like we're lost and we're like screwed and like what do we do now? Not like they were ever lost. It just seemed like well, something went wrong. Were lost. Because remember, they were always like, we just got to keep heading south because that was all they were told to do. Like, in, at the beginning, and when, as soon as they're like, just follow the sun, you know, they, they have that weird watch thing where how you're able to tell north and south. The compass? No, <laughs> compasses, <laughs> compasses didn't work here. Oh, <laughs> but well, I don't even remember this thing. Just, when you, I'm some just saying that. Th- about like, look oh. at the, this hand, face it to the sun, and then like, the difference face... between the hour, or the minute hand and the hour hand. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Some like. Uh, it's probably really important that we know this, but I've never actually looked into it. That sounds like um, like Dead Reckoning or something. Like that's how Columbus found America. Is like you don't you didn't have a compass. Weird watch thing. Well, no, you're like you're using like basically the sun, like the pos- position yeah. of the sun to but find Columbus, your way. Columbus struck out because he brought his digital watch, so he couldn't use the uh, the other watch. That was a terrible joke. <laughs> yeah, try harder. <laughs> mean. Okay, you're the leader, Tyson. You got the notes here, Tyson. Well, the first note I took is that, like, 
all the side details, like the marriage and the cheating, they're not, like, terrible details, but they're really drowned out by, all, like, at least for me, anyway, all the know. other stuff that's going on. I don't know where the cheating even fit in. Like, it... It didn't seem to make this it. Did they specify? The was that like after he disappeared? This movie jumped around in time a lot, but I'm pretty sure that the affair was happening while he was just out. Like he was yeah. just on leave. Yeah, I think he was. Or not leave. His, sorry, like, while he was out doing, doing his, his service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but it no, was confusing. But she said, or the dude that she was banging before they banged was like, well, it's not an insult to his memory. So maybe. Okay, so. Maybe they thought he was dead then. Yeah, Did well, because he, he probably just went missing yeah. and just presumed dead. And so, so that's why he's like, oh, it's been a year. Like, let's bang now. Like, don't worry about it. He's probably dead anyways. Well, he, there, it seemed like they're just assuming he's dead. But this movie was just kind of confusing, just the way it jumped around. It's like it would jump from while he's gone to her being interrogated by these people after everything to her being on the mission. It, it got bringing con- it all together. Yeah, I, and I just found Natalie Portman's character confusing. I wasn't sure if I was supposed to like her or not because she's like this kind of strong character, kind of, you know, kind of admirable. She's a leader, but then she's also just like there's all these scenes of her cheating on her guy and she just kind of seemed like a jerk. So I, didn't, I had a hard time, um, like, emphasizing with her. We need to stop watching movies with uh, female leads because I'm a sexist. <laughs> yeah, no, too That's many female the intro. leads. <laughs> <laughs> that could be the name of the show. No more sure. female leads. It's wow. Show. <laughs> next point, Tyson. Ouch. My next point is just like a, they, they, just a goof. Like, oh, fucking. They, they say how nobody's ever been inside the bubble and been back out, but they're like at an army base. Like, they never had somebody get drunk and just jump in and out of the bubble for funsies like well i mean they mean like, like venture into the like bubble venture, not i'm sure but jumping not like out for the funsies <laughs> of it when you're drunk i don't even know why i wrote that down <laughs> okay so one thing i do hate is the liar revealed trope okay go on what well, so like she keeps it a secret that um that she's worked that, that her husband was one of the people that went in previously and was the ultimate sole survivor the only person ever to make it back. Didn't she think she was, he was dead until... I thought he was dead until the very end. I was so confused. Am I stupid? What? They made it seem like he, he was, was dead. dead for a while. But like, then he, he was in the... he MIA for a year, and then he showed right the hell out of nowhere. Yeah, and then he was in the room at the, at the, at the end scene. He was like, I thought you were dead. Yeah, well, it's just hard to tell because the movie jumps around, so in certain That's scenes, she doesn't know. In certain scenes, he's just missing, so she thinks he's dead. Other times, she knows that he's, that he's made it back. Uh, but you totally just derailed. Like, what was the the liar liar revealed thing? Well, so like they, they they have this liar revealed thing, so that there can be drama later on in the show. And like, it's just one of the oldest tropes ever, and I've never really liked it. And it doesn't it's not really put to any good use here. Like, honestly, a lot of the stuff that they get mad at her for, and that one girl like loses her shit and starts to go nuts, and it's like, oh, you're fucking you're conspiring against us. You're gonna. I gotta kill you because you're yeah, you're trying to get you us and you're bear. lying to us. Like you could have still had that scene if sh- they knew all along that her husband was the only person to come out of it alive. Like if she's losing her mind, of course her mind is gonna go. Well, you you you're 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 problematic. But like I, I just didn't think the liar revealed was too important or essential to anything that went on. Well, here's another flaw with this movie and Natalie Portman's character is that she never really shows any emotion. Like at any point in the movie, she just kind of. Like, do you guys remember her? She never seems super sad about the husband or super glad when she sees it just... (laughs) That one scene that I was laughing at. She's just flat the entire time. Where she was just crying for like two seconds and then just started walking away completely fine. (laughs) Just, (laughs) oh, I'm done now. (laughs) Or like when she... Whoa. Maybe we'll cut that. <laughs> we'll probably cut that. But her, like, her, face, her face looks like the exact same throughout this entire movie. Not a lot of range. I mean, Natalie Portman's... She's not a bad actress. She's been in, like, Black... Sw- she's, she's good. I think she's been nominated. So she's a good actress, but it just... She had, like, no character in this movie. None of the characters are too memorable, actually. No, I didn't about. even know any of their names. Like, whenever I, whenever I look back on this movie, it's always just the visuals that catch me. Yeah, the this movie... I remember really, the really annoying ones. The one that talked like she was a slam poet. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I wish I didn't remember her because I hated her so much. And then that other one... No, never mind. I forgot about her. 
I didn't know there anyone's name. There was another one name. that talked really weird too, and I wanted her to die. Yeah. Like they mentioned that one character had cancer, and I, was, and I didn't know who it was. Like I still don't know who it was. I'm pretty sure it was like that blonde-haired chick that was running the whole thing. But like it doesn't re- it doesn't even matter that they, that's another thing. Like they they mentioned that one of the characters has cancer, which you think would be like a interesting like oh what is her cancer gonna evolve or something and try to turn into another stomach worm or something, but. Like, it, 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 nothing ever becomes of it. And you don't even care because you don't care about her character because yeah, she yeah. has no personality. No. I didn't... I, honestly, the blonde girl, I didn't mind too much. Like, she seemed like a broken... Like, she said for, like, three or four years, she kept sending in more and more people, and then none of them ever came back out. So you can see why she'd be, like, kind of broken and ready to finally go in there and just... Like I didn't mind her. I I she I didn't mind her character at all. But the other three were pretty forgettable. I don't know how many women there were. I think there were four. There was five. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> one of them one of them dies pretty early on. Yeah. Well, one of them almost dies. I was kind of hoping that crocodile would get her. Or was well, I didn't realize how annoying they were at that point. It was it wasn't until later that I was like, oh okay, like the bear. <laughs> The bear, I was ready. To oh yeah. For them to all die. <laughs> I was rooting for the bear. It's like yeah. <laughs> that bear was fucking cool. Fuck him up. Like, I, I still, like, I guess we could talk about the bear a bit later. Like, Let's talk about the bear now. I mean, what is there really to say about the bear other it than cool. it was pretty cool CG and it was seriously unsettling, like that yeah. that sound it that made? That sound was gnarly. Probably one of the most unsettling things I've exactly. seen on in a like, movie in a long time. I didn't like, understand why it talked like the dead person, though. It's see, like the whole bird box thing again. Freaking monsters learn how to talk. Like it, no, I always thought no. that it was sort of like, <laughs> like it was just kind of it, the mixture of its DNA allowed it for it to kind of like replicate her voice, like even if it was just by accident. Like I didn't, it, it's not really very well explained. Like nothing was. I mean, you almost think like because when you when she finds the dead girl, her throat's been ripped out, so you think oh maybe somehow he ate its voice box and. It what got refracted into his voice box by eating it. <laughs> like it, well, it, it, it turns out that alien at the end is just really sad because he can't talk, so he's just <laughs> eating people's voice boxes trying to find the right voice. <laughs> but like, <laughs> I don't know. The bear definitely could have like. It doesn't really make too much sense why it was doing what it was doing, but it's almost so cool that I kind of just want to forget about it because I really like the bear. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what motivations does the bear need other than, like, it's a bear. freakish, like, mutant that's out? I mean, it's, I guess it's hunting. Like, does yeah. it, I guess it has some kind of consciousness, maybe. But it can't see anything. Like, I, don't, I think it, seems it only like had the one eye. I mean, it was right beside them, and it couldn't see them. Could it hear them? Like, how did it even, how was it even getting around? Yeah, that's because it only had ears, either. <laughs> like, it was just, like, some fucked up, deformed bear. Mm-hmm. Although, actually, um... They do say that, like, one of the points they try to drive home is that they're, the time that they spend in there is completely distorted. So, like, maybe the girl kind of did get spliced some of her DNA into the bear, and then, like, for all we know, it could have been a month before that bear showed up again. And during that time, it could have adapted a little bit more to having, like, her voice box. I don't know. It's a lot, like, it, a lot of it does boil down to it just not being too well explained, but... It almost, it, the one thing is that, yeah, time here, you don't really know how long it's been. Because for us, the whole thing could have taken place over, like, the course of, like, five days. But he does make, sh- he does point out that she was in there for, like, I think it was, like, four months she was in there for. So that them being out in the jungle, that's all supposed to be, or the woods, that's supposed to be four months? Something like that, yeah. Okay. But, yeah, I don't know. I think the bear's cool, but he doesn't have to, he's not too well explained. He's just kind of neat. And I wish we got to see more stuff like that. Like that and the, uh, the dead based soldier. Off a novel also. I had a feeling it was. Yeah. Just I'm mostly because of the, the ending. I'm reading the IMDb trivia to see if I got cool things we can talk about. <laughs> What's the next thing? <laughs> <sighs> I remember you pointed out that they're not very well suited up for going into the, uh, the bubble. Like, they're all just wearing military outfits, but you said that it would make more sense for them to... Yeah, it was weird they didn't, like... Because they could have put them in, like, biohazard suits or, like, space well, suits like, or something. I guess that, like, the biohazard suits probably... Like, they know how long the distance is going to be traveled, but you think they'd still have, like, a gas mask or something. Like, at the very least. Like, they're just going in there, like... It's pretty clear they don't know very much about what's going on. They're going into this, like, giant, weird, freakish bubble that people don't come out of, and they just, like... They keep sending people and not giving them 
gear just seems they a bit goofy. They had guns, Kevin. They're fine. <laughs> yeah, was, no, like, even just a gas mask would have really covered this whole thing. Like, I can see kind of why they wouldn't want to do, like, a full decked out, like, space suit because that's not very efficient and it you just don't want to be traveling for weeks or so on a, you know, inside a giant fucking... Honestly, the probably the biggest reason they didn't do that is just, like, not even a logic thing, just... Like, if they're all in these big biohazard suits, it probably just hurts, like, the way the movie looks. And, yeah, like, no, it would have looked plot. pretty silly. And they'd have to be, like, I don't know, they'd have to, like, fiddle around with them. I think it probably was just really inconvenient for the movie. And, I mean, it's a pretty, I don't know. It's it, it's like if they had all gone in with biohazard shoot, suits, they probably all would have died anyways. Like, the bear would have ripped them apart. <laughs> I mean, movies aren't always going to be that realistic so I, I it's goofy but i mean movies are just kind of goofy like that like they sacrifice logic for uh for the film um yeah. natalie portman's character's name is anya and it means mother in hungarian the hell was motherly about her yeah she didn't it means absolutely nothing <laughs> yeah but i'm just reading the things I'm, I'm not saying like that doesn't bad make sense. on you for bringing it up. Maybe they didn't saying, know like, that until would, later after they yeah. named her that. Was that like from an earlier draft? I mean, be they could have just been something? the name. Could have very well just they named her Anya and didn't think about it. Probably being, its origins. Yeah, like I'll just the spoilers. Just some hack spoilers. in a writer's room was like Anya. That's a pretty nice name. Really okay, name. next. So that's probably what happened there. Because I, well, I don't know. It's just she wasn't very motherly, like you said. No. And she kind of like burned down the whole little like freakish. Um, shimmer world so she's like the opposite of her mother she created a big burned out husk in that way so she, she was like the mother of the burned out forest yes. that's, yeah that's I, really i've been feeling it's just uh just a neat name just a name i think it's probably from an earlier draft where she might have had a kid or something maybe it's from the book because like she was named she was from the book presumably so maybe she got a kid in the book or something. i read that they I don't even think that the person who wrote the script read the reread the book before he wrote the script. He's just like, you know, I'm just gonna remember it. Like he read it once and just then just let me go back and look at this. Right, well, I don't know. I think they should give him gas masks at the very least, because yeah. Uh, I just a quick note that yeah, like the one they had no security around the guy when she like wanted to say goodbye to him before she went in the bubble. Like the guard was sleeping, but this guy's kind of like. Like, he went into the bubble and came back out. Like, he doesn't have more security than one sleeping guard. Wait, which, which guy is this? The husband, Kane. Oh. The director it's decided... It's kind of a small... Not, this is just a small scene. The director decided not to reread the novel. Instead, he decided to adapt it, quote, like a dream of the book. That, uh... That's... Yeah. That explains so a lot of this shit. movie. He didn't <laughs> give a fuck. Like, this, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, honestly, book. this movie kind of felt like a dream. Part well, of it was just the weird shimmer. And then nothing makes sense. But just, yeah, like them just stomping around and, like, just the most bizarre Jumping things around. happening. And that I kind of like, like, it, because just with the bizarre visuals and the the loosey-goosey, like, mindset they they put these characters in. Like, I'm, like the way they act is kind of like... Because if they're getting, like, their fucking brain, like, messed with and twisted, like, it kind of makes sense that they start acting the way they do. And especially the end, like, the last, like, half hour of this movie definitely felt like a dream. Or something out of, like, a Stanley Kubrick movie. Like, when no one speaks for 20, 25 minutes, that is pretty, uh, that's pretty rare. Do we want to talk, or do we want to talk about, well, let's save the ending. We'll make yeah. our way down your, your list here. Um, oh, I talk about the lighting, like... How the attention to detail for the lighting was really good. I liked that. Oh, I was right. The end? Oh, well, when we get there. The, the alien choreographed thing was a dance. It was made by a um, choreographer and dancer. <laughs> I, f I find it interesting. <laughs> that is kind of interesting. Uh, really good mystery. Like, like, when you get into this world and you see all this stuff and they're, like, trying to figure out, like, what exactly is going on. Like, I really like the mystery building up. And for once... Like, usually whenever you have a really good mystery, uh, the ending, the, f the result of the mystery is usually disappointing because what you come up with, or what you kind of almost come up with, is usually better, with quotes, I'm putting quotes around everything I'm saying, than what they can actually come up with. Like, you just build up such a high expectation that it's usually just disappointing no matter what the end result is. But when it's revealed that, like, it's refracting, like, everything, including DNA, like, that's just a really clever idea. And it's just like, and it's fun, and it results in like... It's fun. It's a fun Mutants idea. It results in a stuff. lot of fun, uh, like, visuals. Yeah, so basically DNA would just, like, combine in. 
or it was almost like because the plant DNA like took over the humans. It wasn't like there's a combination plant person standing there. It, they just got like subsumed by the plants. Like, are you talking about the plant, plant like the people plant things? The people who used to be people, but were now just like people shaped plants. No, that was plants. That was they were plants that got. I don't know what the they actual chromosome they because called. the. The one woman turned into a plant, remember? See, I don't really get... I don't think she turned into a plant. Well, yeah, she was... That's how she died. plants coming out of her arm, and she was just walking into the forest yeah, that like, might trying have just to strike a pose before she... kind of been like the dream part like that he was tree. trying to get across. She just kind of disappears. Well, also, Natalie Portman and uh, Slam Poet Chick were talking about how, like, oh, it has this kind of DNA, like the structure, like yeah, the human see, structure like, DNA. It was like the, the DNA strand that tells the human body what shape to take. And it got spliced into the plants. And that's okay, why so that's that's like the that. only that's the only thing that was human about it was that. So the plants so then what the happened to that one woman people. then? I don't know that. Like she definitely seemed to yeah, be turned into a plant. She definitely had some plants <laughs> come out of her arm. I don't know. For all we know, that whole scene could have taken place over the course of a week and a half. The it's scene like, where she walks into the forest. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't walking know, that well, slow. Well, okay, because they show her and she has like a few sprouts and then like. She's walking, which in what seems to be the same scene, and she's like covered in shoots. Yeah, because Natalie gets up and like follows her. It's de- it's obviously the same. It scene. seems to be the same scene, and then she's just like standing out there. And then well, there's a scene where Natalie cries for like a few seconds, which is like, oh, I'm done now. <laughs> I'm happy again. I totally missed uh, Natalie crying. I must have been looking down at really? my very Did you hear very. Did me laughing at it? No, I was just very disappointed with my Vietnamese food. That's probably like the biggest <laughs> takeaway from this movie. <laughs> Like whenever you think of this movie, you're gonna think of your. Terrible. I'll just think of bad chow mein. What was the name of that place? We should just like besmirch them. Spring. No, don't say it. Don't say it. God damn it! It was a joke. Yeah, 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 well, we'll Anyways, let them. we'll cut that. No, we'll leave it. Okay. What's your next thing, Tyson? Uh, just I talk about how the, the, the creative design is phenomenal. Like just like wh- all the creature they design. Like I mean, the deer is fine, and the crocodile wasn't really. Who's like, almost he just had a bunch of crocodile? teeth, but like that the the dead soldier and the bear and the. I guess even the, the alien they find at the thing end. The thing at the end is pretty cool. But, like, it's all just very, very cool, like, just to look at. Like, I didn't even notice right away until I looked up the bear on my laptop, like, a week later, that the bear had, like, a human skull growing out of the side of his face. The bear had a name. What was I forget name? the name. Shit, that was a bad thing to bring up. But, like, it's just a very cool-looking... All of it. Just the, 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 the way they splice everything together. Like, even the plants... Like, the way they grow and all the different colors. Like, it's just very pretty and very well thought out. That was definitely, like, this movie's strength was just the cool creature design and visuals. Like, that bear was... I mean, it's pretty hard to shock an audience now, but I think that bear actually, like, did a, did a good job. Well, like, yeah, like, it's... Because usually whenever you have something that's very scary, like a horror movie, it's usually, like, some sort of supernatural origin. Or just a guy that's indestructible, like Jason or something. But that bear is so haunting. Mm-hmm. And it's like a science-based, like with quotes, science-based. Because it's like a science fiction horror, right? Mm-hmm. Like, just, like, the origins of the bear, how it came to be, it's just cool. And, like, the way they resulted in this, like, spliced bear with all this, and the way it screams, <laughs> like, that was so spooky. Like, it's just such a haunting bear. Like, I just love it. So, I mean, we'd be remiss to uh, discuss this film and not mention that Hey There Delilah <laughs> came up like <laughs> 17 a, times like a bunch of times and we all started singing the song it sounded so much like it and I will say that music felt totally out of place in this movie yeah that's the only yeah. reason just about, every, just about every single time it came up uh, another little tidbit is that Poe Dameron from the Star Wars <laughs> franchise makes an appearance. Yeah, I got all the goofy notes you guys had me take at the top. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so if you like Poe Dameron, then you get to see him in this movie. You get to see him uh, two versions of him, and <laughs> one holds on to like a weird like uh, what do you call those things? It's a grenade, but it just like burns. So you get to watch uh, Poe Dameron get all burned up. So if you don't like him, then you get to see him die in this movie, which is cool. Whenever the here, here's a little I leave tidbit. Most of those notes <laughs> <laughs> Whenever there is cheating stuff, I just want them to get back to the sci-fi stuff. I'd agree with that. Uh, I guess like in sci out of place a lot of the flashbacks. Yeah, I just didn't care about any of the characters. Like like we said, this movie's all about like seeing weird stuff happen. So when it's like, oh, here's some here's an attempt at character building. Like here's Natalie Portman banging a guy when she thinks her husband's dead. Like who cares? Just get back to the the badass fucking bear. As Tyson has written here. 
Yeah, yeah honestly, I wish we got to see that bear, bear more because that bear was fucking cool. He should have been the main character. Um, I'd watch a spinoff, spinoff just about, about the bear, the bear. <laughs> just wandering around eating people. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool, screaming at them in their friends' voices. That'd be the only dialogue. Somebody try to make that noise, but what was the noise? Do it. Which noise? The bear noise. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he just screams like it. Which I mean, wait, it's, like at first he, when he was outside and she thought he heard a friend. You actually the bear was actually talking. It was like ah oh, help, but like what the bear can talk? Well, like yeah. he didn't do that at all when he was inside the thing. He was just kind of screaming in her voice. Mm-hmm. Forgot how to talk. Um, I guess like, really quick when the one chick was losing her mind. I guess it was kind of neat trying to see her be self aware while she was being crazy. Like she was really trying to talk herself out of being crazy, but then she'd bounce right back in to, like, no. But if that was the case, then this wouldn't be the case. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that was kind of... I think that's another scene where I was worrying about my chow mein. <laughs> Should we uh, talk about the ending? Because we are yeah, getting... Chow mein some more. <laughs> yeah. Tessie, yeah. do you want to describe what the ending scene is like? So, basically, she shows up, and she finds a videotape at the lighthouse, and she finds a charred corpse. And when she watches the tape, it turns out that it was her husband's corpse, because he took us, like, a... I don't know. It, it, it's some sort of really hot material grenade. that just burns. It's a fire grenade, Sometimes, essentially. Yeah, incendiary grenade. That's that's the thing I was trying to think of before. And so it's he sets off this incendiary grenade, and he holds it, and it blows up in his hands, and then another him walks over and just kind of looks at the charred corpse and then looks at the camera. So and Natalie Portman's all like, oh, shit. But then she goes into the hole, and her buddy's down there, like the blonde one. I don't remember her name. But then she kind of, like, vomits gold everywhere and turns into this giant blob that Natalie Portman can't look away from. And it absorbs some f- blood out of her face and becomes, like, a, a tall, green-looking alien. Man, I sound like a goddamn maniac. It is <laughs> a really... explain this. It's a weird scene. <laughs> like, it, it is pretty weird. And, like, essentially this thing is just kind of mimicking her every move. Like, it doesn't... Like, the way she describes it doesn't seem to want anything it just is mimicking her it's lonely it's just lonely <laughs> well it mimics her until it slaps her in the face or slams her <laughs> up against the door yeah because she tried to attack it and then it was like bitch mm-hmm. no and then she outsmarted it by giving it an incendiary <coughs> grenade and it might have died question mark when she did this yeah it we were like was too well, it seemed like she and other dude were both alien guy at the end because the eye thing at the end yeah it just seems like when the when the, the version of Natalie Portman that takes the incendiary, she's not acting like a human. She's not, like, freaking out and screaming and, like, burning up. It's just acting in this really strange alien way. So I I just have a hard time imagining that being the human version of her dying. No, there's no way that so was the human version. So she survives that. But, yeah, the movie hints at the end when she it shows her and Poe Dameron. They both have the weird eyes. I'm fairly confident that Poe Dameron came back, like, the not Poe Dameron came back, who's the alien. Natalie Portman, the the eyes indicate that something's wrong there too. So maybe th- something gets her on the way back, or like her DNA mutates and she goes all freakish on her way back. It, I mean, either way, something is horribly wrong at the end. Yeah, it's one of those what, like go and on and think think about it sort of endings. But it's just like I don't know. It's, it just seems kind of weird. I guess I have a small theory about maybe what it might have happened. Like I think they both might be the aliens. I have a theory about, it just occurred to me, why she might be named Anya, meaning mother. Because if, they both have the weird eyes, so maybe her and Poe Dameron create, like, the first of this, like, new new weird species. So she's, like, the mother to this new, uh, new genetic, new genetic build. So that could be it. I, I, I like this scene a lot better the second time I watched it. The first time it was, uh, just kind of, like, it just seemed out of nowhere. Like, the Is whole... That because it was the first time you spoke pot? <laughs> <laughs> Second time. Yeah, yeah t- everyone, Tyson is a pothead. Yeah, I'm officially a pothead now because I've done it twice in my 24 years of existence. Yes. <laughs> but, like, it, it really, d- like, the whole point is, like, it's building up and it's this DNA that's refracting and all these creatures are being created. So you're kind of, like, wondering, like, oh, man, what's going to be wh- at p- ground zero? Like, how much chaos is going to have happened? But then she gets there and the whole thing is just made out of, like, grass rocks or there's like these vines everywhere that are hard and there's an alien in the basement that wants to mimic her like it just kind of takes a turn to the left like really quickly they do emphasize at the end that um 
whatever that was didn't come to destroy. It was changing. So it was making something new. So I know we said that the whole Anya thing was probably just some hack writer's idea. But it actually does seem like there's a creation happening. But then so that's like contradictory of everything that I've read because it says that the whole theme of the movie is self-destruction. And the movie's called Annihilation. Yeah, so... Yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's a plot hole of the guy that made the movie. It's yeah. Like, get your well, I'm not really again. sure. Maybe just because the way he wrote the script. Do we want to start with our final thoughts and recommendations? Or do you have anything else? Oh, uh, let's see. That he seems a little weird. A little <laughs> weird? <laughs> just a little bit. It was like half an Maybe hour of talking and dancing. Maybe out. The alien thing is creepy. Yeah, it's really can. interesting to watch, but it feels out of place. Like, you know, seems whatever you encountered is... D- yeah, I wrote down your joke. It seems like whatever you've encountered is dead. Like, they go back to the lighthouse, and they're like, yeah, there's, he's not here, so he must be dead. Oh, yeah. Like, you didn't just... <laughs> they, <laughs> just they just assume that the thing's dead, because, like, it just charred ashes, but it's like, well, it could have also just run off. Like, <laughs> oh, like, yeah. like you don't know. Fu- like, it could have fucking walked. Like, it, like, why would they assume it's dead if it's not at the lighthouse? Like, that's know. silly. And then... Uh, yeah, no, I'm thinking, like, because... If you know, like, you know how the, the alien catches fire and it kind of touches things and it burns everything to the ground? Yeah, it starts a whole, like, chain reaction. Like, you think that maybe the fire is what's doing that, but the but none of that shit happened when uh, Kane slid himself on fire. Like, it didn't burn anything to the ground. So that means that it was specifically the alien that was burning everything to the ground. Yeah. So I don't know if that's a detail they want to pay attention to. There's also the fact that... Well, that is a clue that, like, that Natalie Portman was not being burned because, like... When a human burns, they just get burned up. When the alien yeah, burns, there's fire popping up all. When over. the alien burns, it just sets everything ablaze and burns down the whole. Yeah, whole then joint. it just really doesn't make sense why it didn't happen when other dude did it. So yeah, I'm thinking that like the alien survived and Natalie Portman probably didn't make it back, and so they are both aliens at the end. That's mm-hmm. my theory. That's what I think happened, but like. <sighs> I don't know, it's really left up to a lot of interpretation. Just because of where, where we are sitting with the time, I think we got to yeah, no, that was go the, around... That was uh, the last detail. Right let's go around the circle and say uh, final thoughts and whether you recommend or not. Let's start with Tyler. I think it was kind of boring. The visuals are cool, but that's about all it had. Do you recommend it? Not really, no. I do. Like, I mean, I, I pretty much agree with him, but the visuals really took this movie off the... Just they, it just really carried it for me. Like a lot of the smaller details, like the cheating and the and like the in, the beginning scene until they get into the bubble. Like it's just kind of boring. Like it's kind of interesting. Like hmm, what's that bubble doing? But like you once it get once you actually get in there, it's just it gets carried so far away. Like I just love it. And yeah, you're not gonna remember any of the small the subplots and shit. You're just gonna remember the cool the bear. Creatures. Yeah, the bear. Yeah, I think we're all kind of on the same page here. Not like an amazing plot or characters, but there's some pretty cool visuals. So I'd say it's worth watching, just checking it out, just for that. But uh, overall, like, you know, it's okay. It's so uh, that's that's it for um, episode two of Movie Suck and So Does Your Face, or whatever we end up calling this next week. So we'll see you next time.